Hi, this is Hien. I want to tell you a little more detail about the backstory with my, my dad uh, growing up. I just remember, you know, as, as a kid, I think I was around three or four years old, just, you know, I really excited for my dad to come home from work. And I remember I would just, you know, go play, go do my thing, run around, look at the window, and be like, okay, his car's not out there, okay. I come back. I'll probably like check it every few times, you know, like I don't know how, what, what, like every hour, or who knows what the, <laughs> an hour is. Just when I'm bored, like, okay, is that home yet? You know, kind of thing. And finally, like almost around, like, you know, I was getting, you know, the sun was starting to come down a little bit and starting to get a little cooler. Uh, my dad would, you know, finally, you kind of hear him walking up the stairs, steps, you know, boom, 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 right? And you're like, oh, yeah, that, that's dad, you know, like you get really excited. And so he came in the door, you know, I think he was carrying his lunch bag or whatever, and he just kind of plopped it down, uh, just sat on the couch, just like, you know, like, like he's ex just exhausted or something. But I didn't know better. You know, all I saw was just, you know, his leg, <laughs> you know, I was like, daddy's home. So I was like, daddy, you know, I was just like, I went out to grab his leg, hugged it, you know, and just like, you know, jumped on it, you know, whatever. And uh, I don't know why I remember this when I was that young, but um, but I just remember, and somehow I just kind of brought it with me. But after I was hugging for a while, he just sort of got frustrated and just like like well, this is his leg. He just like flicked me, and I just went flying. And I I remember just hitting the wall like sideways or something, and just like fell down, slid down the wall, and then just fell over. And then I just I don't know what happened. I, I just burst it up, burst it out in tears. I was just like. Just like a loud yell, you know, like a bit loud baby cry kind of thing, and uh, and I was just like, what happened? Like I was just so excited to see you, and you just didn't like you just rejected my love kind of thing. Like what happened? And and, and I felt hurt, and, and I got hurt or something. So I remember that night, like I was either crying myself to sleep, or my parents would argue in the background. Uh, probably my mom was telling me that what he, what he just did, what you know, what he did to me, and that he should you know maybe handle it better or whatever. Uh, I don't know, but I just remember crying myself to sleep, just like wondering what, what I was it, what I do wrong, what does he, what you know, what does he not like about me, or maybe I you know I was a horrible son or something, and and yeah, and that kind of carried me forward in life. Um, uh, there were times when I, I would think back and I would just kind of get emotional about it. And um, and uh, and it just like kind of put like a sour taste and, and, and hurt uh, and kind of like you, you throw kind of starts to like you know like heart gets a little, a little hard to swallow kind of thing and and yeah so I just remember at a certain point in my life uh, I I knew that I, I didn't want to um, I, I wanted to be there for my kids. Because I felt like my dad wasn't there for me. Uh, he was always working uh, night shift. Uh, he was, I think, at the time he was washing dishes uh, when I was little. And eventually he started to have um, work for a donut shop. So he started learning how to make donuts and for like little, no pay, until he was able to then, you know, kind of uh, finish his apprenticeship or whatever it was. And then he was able to work for pay. But he'll get like he'll work from like I think 10 o'clock at night to about four or five in the morning for like 60 bucks a day, you know, and that's like peanuts, right? I don't know how far that was, it was like 20, 30 years ago, I guess, but, um, yeah, and then, you know, so when, uh, I'm, so when he'll be tired, and he'll kind of sleep through the morning, and then, I don't know if he's, he would like drop me off at school, kind of thing, and then come back, and have, a, you know, a meal with mom or lunch, or whatever, and then sleep throughout the day. So he just wanted to come home, he's sleeping, and then by the time uh, dinner rolled around, I'm done. I, I don't remember, I think occasionally we had some dinners with him. I, I kind of vaguely remember having dinner regularly with, with him. And then by the time I'm about to go to bed, um, he's like awake and, and then he's got to go to work kind of thing. So there was just a very sl sl sliver of time where I was able to see him. And I don't know whether he was around to hang out with me or not, or he just kind of just slept. But I remember just playing with my friends usually, and kind of I had a group of friends that just we call ourselves the other people's property or OPP. We would just like 
uh, jump into people's backyards and we just rebels and we're like, oh cool, broomsticks, take that. Oh cool, some fruit, let's take that, take a bite, you know, throw it away. And I'll, someone left food at someone's doorstep, let's go take it, you know, and we're just being little jerks and thugs and, you know. Yeah, so that, that was that. And so I just kind of hang around the wrong wrong crew and wrong wrong people and friends. And uh, that's kind of all, all I remember. So, yeah, um, so that's just a, a little backstory of me growing up. And then eventually, you know, they actually eventually owned a donut shop. And I was working there for at least five years from high school up until, yeah, I'd say from like middle school. Actually, from middle school till past high school. So a good four to five years. And I was like, man, I don't even, I don't want to be in this donut shop anymore. They're like, why don't you take it over? And there's all this stuff. I'm like, no, no, I'm going to college. I'm getting out of here. And so, as soon as I went to college, um, I finally finished it. Uh, I didn't get. I got my own student loans, and I had to pay my way through. But I kind of mainly lived off student loans the whole time. And then once I got into the real world, um, I was then able to kind of work. My first paycheck was cool. All right, and you know, I started making. I gotta start paying this you know twenty thousand dollar loan that I got from school. And then after I got my I was like, dude, like, what happened? Like, thirty percent of it's gone. Okay, all right. Well, let me work harder to to get to work to make more, right? And the more hard work, I was like, wait, and I'm getting thirty nine percent tax. Like, what happened? Like, why am I being penalized to work harder and make more money? Like, I just, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I get that it's just set up as a graduated scale, but why was it set up that way to penalize you more to to work harder? Because I'm. I'm more able to pay more I, I don't know I didn't think that I didn't think that makes sense and I felt like it was pet uh, what's it called punishing me for working harder so yeah that's what I thought I was doing so anyways uh, eventually I was able to meet my wife Amber uh, get married and we went through some hard times uh, I lost my job in 2008, and then 2009, I got a new job in ATK, uh, doing, before it was trajectory analysis, and we are just simulating things and kind of tuning settings, and then, um, I'll, I'll go into more detail about that, but then we, I got another job at ATK, and that was like some kind of a trajectory too for airplanes, and they are trying to like do the scanning, and when, you know, surface to air missiles, and they turn off their their, their signal, the, the missile kind of gets lost, so so I had to kind of try and find it through this through this through, through this other, I think they call it millimeter wave or something like that. Anyways, so then uh, after that, um, got laid off. I became a real estate broker for about a couple of years, and you know move move some real estate and sold a few. But it was around 2008 when the market crashed, so it, it took too long for me to actually get enough, you know, get enough you know, volume move. And then I, after a while, I was like, you know, it's not for me. Uh, I'm waiting around in the hot sun in a, in a black suit. And, just, and then I stop working. That's it. It's, it's, you stop getting paid. Uh, it's no different than any other job. But I thought that that would be uh, a way to, to get out of it. Because when I first researched um, uh, about the taxes, they're like, yeah, you need to own a business. And I'm like, okay, great. Got a business. And I got all, you know, so you need to get some deductions, but then how do you have make some sales? Well, I get better learn some sales. So what better way to be a real estate agent, right? So that's kind of how I let, got into that. And then, um, but still, it, it's just no different from a job because you stop selling, you stop getting paid, and that's kind of it, right? In the hot set, chasing clients, making phone calls all day. And it wasn't for, for me. As soon as I felt like I was working too much, I was like, no, <laughs> not for me. Anyway, so... So then we ended up taking a donut shop because uh, my mom was like, hey, we got a donut shop. We're getting tired when you run it. And I had thought to myself, like, hey, I promised myself not to go back. And, you know, that's why we got the college education, right? But somehow I was like, all right, fine, let's just take it and kind of figure it out. I was able to raise the business from $300 to $800 a day. Uh, but when we first got in, we changed the name and all this stuff. So we had to get back into all the updated codes that there was about 20, 30 k just to start out. You get the new plumbing, new sink, you need a grease trap, this on this and that, and all this other stuff. And it was just a pain. And then I'm doing the math and everything. Uh, as soon as we got there, actually, as soon as we got there, I found out my my wife was pregnant. 
and and she was leveled. Uh, she had um, she was she had morning sickness for three months straight. She could not move. She couldn't get out of bed. As soon as she got up, she's like, Ugh, you know, just couldn't do it. So I was there by myself, and my aunt came, helped out, and so that was that was helpful. There was days where I just kind of like was I was so scared. I was like, God, I, I don't I don't know what to do. I, I don't even know why I ran to pick this business up, and I have no experience running a business. But uh, I'm here. I'm just gonna show up uh, somehow. I'm, I'm here, uh, and there are times where I just remember in the donut shop where it's just cold. Um, the wind, the the, the fog has come in. It just feels really moist inside, and I can see in where we're making donuts um, these cardboard um, th this cardboard you know that that we lay down uh, for the boxes that we had uh, for cups and. We will use that to kind of, you know, when we get the donuts out of the fire, we kind of bang it, and then we kind of take it to the glazing area. But as you do that, the oil drips down, and that's where the cardboard catches the oil. And I kind of remember vaguely, or maybe pretty vividly, clearly, just kneeling down, just praying, like, God, I, I don't know what to do, but I trust in you, and we just have a new baby, and I'm just so scared. I, I, I don't even know why I'm here. And each and every day, um, I just pray that you, you would just help guide me and you know help show me the way and and you know and help me do this. Uh, but through it all, I learned a lot. We, I, I ended up hiring a lot of people uh, because I wanted to be there for our first child. And just like uh, I kind of remember that I I didn't wanted to not be there for my kid and. And so I was like, you know what? This is our first kid. I need to be there for her. And so when I hired everybody, it just kind of counted me hours. We were like doing 16 hours a day uh, from making donuts to opening at 4 a.m. to about 8 at night, I think, or 10 at night. I forget what it was. It was just long hours, just tough, you know. Um, and hiring them at $8 an hour at the time, doing the math and they were like, we're only making 4 bucks an hour. Like with all the income we made, like eight hundred dollars a day, opening for sixteen dollars, uh, sixteen hours, kind of boils down to like four, like four dollars or something like that. Um, and I was like, so I'm hiring them for eight, and I'm only making four dollars an hour. By the time I pay them, I'm losing four dollars an hour. So I'm like, huh. So we started racking up like you know major deficits throughout time. Eventually, I was able to see my daughter be born and I'll be there for them. Eventually, the donor shop did close down. But I remember doing it all, like, usually the last minute, something would happen to kind of get us through the month. And then it was the, 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 saw, the, the straw that broke the hell's back was that um, we were on a plane trip to do, do some real estate training. And my parents came in, they just kind of did a hostile takeover and took their donor shop back. And so, so we went through that. And then we just had kind of abandoned us like forget we're just, we're just gonna leave and we kind of message our our friends and say hey we closed our shop sorry we're probably gonna move to texas or something and a friend that i met in real estate he's like hey you know we're kind of flipping houses right now i have a brother that's doing that um i have a place that kind of i need some help with i have some kids that could need, want my wife needs you know his wife needed uh, help with um the kids out in the morning um, would you mind? I knew this that Amber was my wife is, you know, a chef. So if you wouldn't mind having her, if you guys live with with us, we have room for you guys, free room and board. Uh, she just takes care of all the meals, and do all the shopping, and I can help with his brother with the real estate, and we could, well, that might be that might work out. I was like, huh? I was like, well, that's a pretty good deal for me, you know. Let's do it. So I took that, and you know, flipped some real estate for, with them for a little bit. Uh, created another bot for him too to kind of search scour MLS listings and find deals but uh, some deals I brought to him he just didn't want to buy it and whatever and, and I was just limited he was my only buyer so I was kind of limited to that so it kind of sucked a little bit but eventually I was like you know what maybe I'm just, something's wrong with me um, maybe Maybe I'm not consistent. Maybe I'm just lazy. I don't know. <laughs> and I can't do something consistently. I just keep jumping from one thing to another to another. Maybe I just need to get a regular job, humble myself, 
do something boring for a while. So I took this job at Burger Bullets, where I thought I was like, yeah, you just punch bullets all day, just you know, making them. But actually, uh, so I took that, and all you just fill the fill the, this machine that has like lead jackets and whatever, and it just kind of assembles all the bullets together, and then you kind of inspect and and, and put them out. Uh, so during that time, when I was going to work, uh, I remember Penelope was. Uh, I was like, Penelope, I'm going to work now. And she's like, No, Daddy, no. And she would like, you know, hold on to me. I was like, Let me do a hug. And she's like this, and then I'm gonna go. And she's got like, you know, dragging my neck, and I just really hurt and like feeling inside because I was like, I have to go, and I have to push her away. And it just reminded me of the time of when my dad, you know, just rejected me and flicked me away. And I promised myself that I wouldn't ever do it with my kid. And so. Even though that's what I wanted to do to be there for them, uh, do it. I you know haven't haven't figured it out. I had to go to work just like uh, my dad did, and I had to push my daughter away, and, and that, that was the part that hurt the most uh, inside. And and just trying to work, just you know, tearing up inside, bawling, you know, the you know the lump in your throat, and just like it's just so heartbreaking having to do it to my daughter. And so, <clears throat> told myself that I, I had to figure this out some way or another. So, I think I'll end this video here, and then I'll do the next video. So, so subscribe below uh, if you, if you haven't yet, and uh, or I'll send you the next email or whatever it is, uh, depending on how you kind of found my found my video. But stay tuned for the next one. I'm gonna leave it at this point, and just like the point where where it was just hard it was just hard to to have to push her away but thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one